Hello guys, it's Aster here. Welcome back to a brand new video. So by the title, you already know what this is gonna be. Um, this is one of those videos that I've had planned for so long, but I just kept pushing it and pushing it. But finally, we're here doing it. Now, I'm gonna try my best not to trip over my words too much because I am not used to speaking to uh, a camera anymore. I'm not used to, well, I'm speaking to you guys, but I'm not used to being in front of a camera. Um, so sometimes that makes me a little nervous and I start tripping over my words. I'm trying to get, uh, used to this whole thing again. So, um, yeah, I'm not gonna give away too much about each game because I know there's some of you that haven't played some of these and I don't want to spoil anything. Um... I'm just going to give a little bit about each game and again, I'm not going to put these games in any particular order, all right? This is this is a top list, but I'm not going to put a number on it. On it. I'm not going to say top 10, I'm not going to say top 5. I'm not going to put any of these games in any particular order except for one. There's one game in this entire pile that is my favorite game, favorite horror game of all time. So that is the only exception. Everything else is not going to be in any particular order. So let's start with the first game. That is Alone in the Dark. The New Nightmare. Um, I've tried the trilogy and a lot of people usually love the trilogy. I don't dislike it, but I couldn't really get into it that much. I didn't find it scary. Obviously because, it, you know, the trilogy are, you know, really, really old games by now. Um, and this one, I don't know what it was, but I had an instant connection to this game. Um, now this is that type of game that plays pretty much like Resident Evil. Um, and that's one of the things that I mentioned before in one of my videos where people look at a classic horror game like this, you know, and they see that the gameplay is fixed camera angles and, um, you know, tank controls and they assume, oh, it's a Resident Evil ripoff. It's like no other game has the right to use that kind of gameplay, which is kind of stupid. Um, now, it's quite different from Resident Evil in terms of story. And I even believe in terms of atmosphere, I believe this has a more like a darker atmosphere to it. Not to say that Resident Evil doesn't have a dark atmosphere because it does. But I feel like Alone in the Dark um, has a more, you know, has a darker feeling to it. Well, it's called Alone in the Dark, but you guys know what I mean. Um, now here you can play as two characters, either Edward Carnby and Eileen. I don't remember her last name because usually when I play this game, I play as Edward. Um, I like the, the Eileen scenario is not something that I enjoy too much. I mean, it's good, but it's, I prefer to play as Edward Carnby, to be honest. Um, because it starts, I guess it's because it starts with a gun. So <laughs> it's not as, you know, difficult when you start off. Um, this is a difficult game, though. Um, it, this is a very difficult game. The, the, the puzzles are not easy at all in this game, if it's your first time playing. So, um, yeah, you go into this island, I think it's called the Shadow Island, if I'm not mistaken. Because I haven't played this in a while. I, I need to go back to this. Um, oh, uh, Eileen's last name is Eileen... Or Aline. No, Aline, not Eileen. I am completely getting confused with Silent Hill 4 here. It's Aline Sedrak. Or Sedrak, or however you want to freaking spell it. But, um, yeah, her name is Aline, not Eileen. It's close enough. Um, but I think, uh, the name of the island is, is Shadow Island, I believe. I, if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong if you played this before. Uh, like I said, I haven't played this in quite a while. Um, and you have basically to go investigate, to go and see what happened to your best friend that died there. Uh, so that's pretty much the gist of the story. You start by going into this mansion in the island. Um, but, you know, the, the whole entire story does not happen just in a mansion. You go to other places in the island and uh, you have a lot to explore. You have a lot of puzzles to go through. Like I said, it's not an easy game. Um, so, yeah. It's going to give you quite a few uh, hours of gameplay, especially because, you know, you're going to try to figure out the puzzles. It does have backtracking. So, you know, every single goodness of the classic survival horror games that's in this game. And I guess that's why I enjoy it so much. So, Alone in the Dark, I totally recommend it if you guys never played it. And now I need to find some uh, 
place to put my games and this is not gonna be an easy thing. I'm gonna put the controller there, put the game over there. All right, so the next game, this is a Capcom game and um, it's one of those that right now, I'm so used to this game, I played it so many times that now I have to play it every time on hard mode because less than that is just child's play to me. So yeah, Haunting Ground made by Capcom. This is one of my favorite horror games of all time. Obviously, I mean, the, the list is called, you know, my favorite horror games of all time. Duh. <laughs> um, but yeah, made by Capcom and the rumor has it that this game was supposed to have been a Clock Tower 4 game, but Capcom, apparently Capcom already came out and said that they never intended this game to be a Clock Tower 4 game. Um... It plays, of course, a lot like Clock Tower 3. Uh, you do have a companion in this game, which is a dog, named Huey. Um, the dog will help you find, you know, um, all types of items. It will help you get some certain key items that you can get to. Um, you're gonna have, basically your interaction with the dog at the beginning is gonna have to train him. So every time you ask him, to go get something, you uh, have the possibility to say, hey, good dog, you know, if he does something bad, you have the possibility to say, you're a bad dog. You know, you gotta teach him throughout the game. And that depending on what you do, the game will either like you or dislike you. So that's a cool concept, I really like it. Um, but this is basically a stalker game. You're gonna have at least, I believe, four stalkers throughout the game. Uh, let me see, Debilitas, uh, Daniela, uh, Ricardo and Lorenzo, I think. Yeah, I think that it's basically four stalkers throughout the game. Um, it is kind of a hide-and-seek game. It's just like you have places that you can hide, but there's not a lot of hiding places. Uh, so it's basically more a running game than anything else. Uh, the game revolves a lot around alchemy as well, so you're going to be uh, creating stuff with alchemy. There's going to be some uh, items that you can create to defend yourself. Some other items that are going to be um, offensive type of uh, items. Uh, you're going to be able to attack with them. Um, but they're not going to do a lot of damage. It's, not, it's definitely one of those games that where you don't have weapons. You know, you, you got to run and hide and uh, you got to strategize. And uh, basically those items that you create are basically more used for the... Uh, boss battles that you're gonna have and of course the dog will also help you throughout your boss battles and uh, and when you're being stalked so um, for example let's say you're um, you know you're backed up into into a corner and the stalker is almost getting you and you can command the dog to bite him and that will give you a chance for you to just run away um, so yeah, it's a very, very good game. I think it is quite underrated. I think that also it's not very easy to find. All right, guys, so next game is Rule of Rose. Now, this game is very difficult to find. Ne uh, last time that I uh, actually saw this game in Amazon, this was going this was going for 80 bucks, and that's really expensive for a PS2 game. Uh, unfortunately, because of those outrageous prices, not a lot of people get to play it, get to experience it. Now, again, rumor has it that this game was banned in the UK and some other countries. I don't know if that's true or not. There's been people already saying that it's it's a lie. Um, but uh, I think it was banned because, um, you know, the, the people up there thought this game was glorifying um, some kind of incest and rape and, and all that kind of crap, which is not true at all. Um, but this game is really good. This game, by the way, has one of the best soundtracks I have ever heard in any game. So, yeah, it is a shame that not a lot of people are going to get to play this. Um, now, I have to say that if you want to get into this game, if you never played it, your main focus should be the story because the gameplay... The battle system is complete shite. So if you're going into this game thinking that the battle system is alright, no. This battle system is really, really bad. So, But the story totally makes up for it. It's totally worth to go uh, and play this game uh, just to experience the story. Um, this is not so much a survival horror game. It is more of a psychological 
horror game. You basically play as a, a teenager called uh, Jennifer. And you wake up in this bus, this, this, kid's, they, this kid wakes you up and asks you to basically read him a story. And he hands you a book. You open the book, the book basically doesn't have anything. And uh, when Jennifer goes to look up at the boy, the boy is gone and he's running out of the bus. So Jennifer follows him into an orphanage. And that's where shit starts getting really weird. It starts getting really, really weird right in the beginning of the game. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna describe this scene to you. Because like I said, I don't want to give away too much. But as soon as you get to the orphanage, you can see these two kids with long sticks with bags over their heads hitting something in a bag and the bag is totally bloody so you know they're beating something up in there um so that's the kind of game this is so basically um there's a lot of symbolism in this game there's a lot of repressed memories in this game uh that's the whole entire theme of it so if you like let's say silent hill because it's the most popular psychological horror series that i know out there um then you're gonna like this but beware, because the gameplay is really shite. But the story, like I said, totally makes up for it. The soundtrack totally makes up for it. The characters, too. It's really good. So I recommend it if you can find it for cheap. And if you have any other ways, I'm not hinting at anything, that you can play that game. Um, ah, man, this game. It's such a shame that this game did not get like almost got no attention i don't know a lot of people that actually know about this game and it makes me sad it makes me really really sad i actually let's play this on my channel um i don't know if i put it on private or not i don't think i did um there's quite a few let's plays like rule of rose i already let's play it on the channel but i believe that one i put it on private because i want to redo it um i'm not sure if i did the same thing for ghost hunter I just said the name of the game, so yeah, Ghost Hunter. This is a um, comedic adventure horror game. So um, if you're going into it expecting it to be very, very scary, it's not what you're going to get. You're going to get horror, you're going to get creepy imagery, but you're also going to get comedy uh, because you're, the main character you play as, he delivers these really clever one-liners at times, and it's really funny. Um, just his interaction with some of the characters is, it's just really funny. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, Ghost Hunter, it's a third-person, uh, shooter, and you play as a ghost hunter, basically. So, you play as Lazarus Jones, he's a cop. Um, and you're going with your partner to, um, I believe it's a high school. And uh, you're there to investigate the case of a teacher that killed all his students. He apparently went crazy and killed all his students in the school. And vanished. So you're exploring the school and you, uh, you get to the basement and you come across this weird contraption. Of course, that your main character is going to touch the button on that contraption and voila, all the ghosts are freed. So, um, after that, some stuff happens. Your uh, partner goes missing, basically. And then um, your objective throughout the game, like the story is going to revolve around you trying to find your partner and, uh, you know, trying to capture all the ghosts that you set free. So basically, that's the objective of the game. It's really, really cool. The story is really well made. Really funny characters. Really creepy imagery, like I said. The soundtrack is, again, it's one of the best as well, to be honest. And um, you go through all these portals that take you to all these different worlds. And you're going to be capturing ghosts. Uh, going to be reading documents. Going to be, uh, you know, doing some puzzles. And you're going to progress through the story just like any normal horror game so um it plays really well it's really fun and um i recommend it a hundred percent okay guys so the next game uh, a lot of you might not actually consider this a horror game but i've i've seen a lot of people actually consider this a horror game and i'm kind of in the middle but i'm gonna put it in the list ever, uh, anyway because it is one of my favorite games one of my favorite games of all time and um I do believe it does deserve the spot in a horror 
uh, list because it, it does have some really creepy stuff going on. So uh, the game I'm talking about is... Onimusha Warlords. Unfortunately, you know, there, there is a better version of this game, but unfortunately it's only for the Xbox, the original Xbox. It's called Genma Onimusha, so I'll never get to play that because I don't have an original Xbox. Um, so this spawned basically, uh, you know, it's made by Capcom, and it seems like this spawned from a beloved series by Capcom Resident Evil. It plays exactly like Resident Evil, you play as a samurai called uh, Samanosuke Akechi. And uh, basically the gist of this game is very, very simple. You, um, there is this princess, basically, that gets kidnapped by demons. And it's up to you to try and uh, free the princess, save the princess. So uh, you're gonna come, you're gonna get this special kind of glove that's gonna be given to you by the... Uh, Ah, oh, I don't want to butcher their names. Ogres, I think they're called in this game. I'm not entirely sure. I think they're called Ogres in this game, which is kind of a weird name. They give you this special gauntlet that will allow you to fight back the demons. And will allow you to actually uh, collect their souls into the glove. And with those souls, you will be able to upgrade uh, your weaponry and, um, you know, some other stuff in, in the game for yourself. So, um, it's a very cool game. Again, very heavy on puzzles, um, creepy, creepy, creepy demons, uh, some awesome, awesome boss battles, and I'd say this is basically my favorite game in the entire Onimusha series. So even though I do love 2 and 3, I didn't finish Dawn of Dreams yet, um, but if I have to pick one, the first one takes the cake. Alright, so the next game, it's a special game, and a lot of people know about this one. Um, and it's it, it's had a cult following for a long time. And if it wasn't for Failed Psycho, I would have never been able to play this game. And it's fantastic. And I really appreciate that she gave me her copy of the game. Because if it wasn't for her, I would have never been able to experience this. And the game I'm talking about is Eternal Darkness. Um, now this is a psychological horror game. I know a lot of people call it uh, survival horror, but it's it's a psychological horror game um, where you go through a lot of your ancestors' lives. You play as a lot of uh, the main characters' ancestors, and um, it all revives around the Book of Eternal Darkness. And I don't want to give up too much. Uh, this game is... You know, I would prefer you guys to actually track down a copy of this if you haven't and play it for yourselves. Um, because this is actually one of those gems that you do not, you do not want to have spoiled. Um, so it's a really good game. Um, I know that they were working on a sequel that unfortunately got cancelled. Um, and I, I, I think it was called Shadow of the Eternals. That was supposed to be the sequel. And I, you know... I don't know why Nintendo does not, or some other company, you know, buy the rights to this um, and do a sequel to this or remaster this game because not a lot of people got the chance to play it. The only way you can play it is if you have either a Wii or a GameCube and you find the game. So, um, yeah, this is a very, very good game. If you guys have never played it, again, I recommend it. Again, don't want to spoil too much about that one. That's certainly one of those gems that is it's just amazing. It will mess with your mind. So I'm losing my voice because I've been talking for so long and we still have quite a few games to go through. So, all right. So next game, Project Zero or Fiddle Frame as it's known in the US. Um, absolutely love this game. I had before this, I had never seen a concept like this before. Um, it is amazing. So, in this game, you deal with ghosts. You basically play as Miko, um, and she has to go into the Immortal Mansion to try to find the whereabouts of her brother. Her brother that went into the same mansion to try to find Mr. Takamine, which is a, nov a novel writer um, that he works with. He disappeared going there, his brother, um, her brother went in there to try to find that man, disappeared. So now, you play as Miko, you go in there and you're trying to find your brother and um, you just, you know, you realize that some shit's going down in there. You're going to have to deal with a lot of ghosts. The only way that you have to defend yourself in the series is with a camera. So you're capturing ghosts with a camera. 
Um, and if that sounds ridiculous, trust me, it works. It works really, really, really well, and it makes it even time ten times scarier. Um, so yeah, I do recommend this. Uh, I'm showing this one first because this is my favorite one in the series. But I have another one in the same series that I'm going to show just after this one. Alright guys, so before I showed Project Zero, I should have mentioned that uh, there's actually two games on the, the Freedom Frame uh, franchise that I'm going to show in this list. Um, and uh, there's actually two exceptions that I'm doing for this, which is a the Fatal Frame series and uh, later on the Resident Evil series. So there's going to be two games on there too that I want to show you guys as my favorite in a franchise. So um, yeah, the second game in a Fatal, Fatal Frame series that I want to show you guys is Project Zero 2. This is the Wii edition and this is exactly the version that I mean. Now, not to say that the original version sucks, because it doesn't, it's, it's, again, it's amazing, it's a masterpiece in my eyes, it's a horror masterpiece in my eyes. Um, but I do believe they did a great job with this remake, so I believe this only came out in Europe, um, in Japan. So, if you live in the US, you're not gonna be able to play this unless you have, like, a hacked Wii or something. Um... Which is a shame, it's really stupid. I don't know why they didn't release this in America. Um, there's a lot of Fiddle Frame fans in America, so... Um, but I do recommend you to get this. If you have no way to play the remake, then go and play the original if you haven't yet, because it is amazing. Um, here you play as Mio and Mayu, um, and I always get confused, because I can never say who's Mio and Mayu unless I'm actually looking at the characters. Um, so I believe Mio is, uh, actually no, I'm not gonna say it, because I don't want to spoil it. I was about to spoil something that I shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, same concept as the first game. Again, the only weapon that you have is your camera, the camera obscura. And, uh, you, of course you can upgrade your camera, that's something I forgot to mention. You can upgrade your camera, and, um, yeah. So let's just say in this game that something weird is happening to your twin sister. And she keeps running around the village and you basically have to try to find out what the hell happened. There's, again, just like in the first game, there is some rituals going on and all of that is involved with everything that's been going on. And uh, it, this one actually takes place in the entire village. Uh, as opposed to the first one that takes place in just one place, the Imura Mansion. Here it takes place in uh, various houses and, and mansions. Uh, it takes place in the entire uh, village, so it is a very, very good game. And again, of course, I recommend it if you haven't played it yet. Even if you can't, again, if you can't get your hands in the remake, go play the original. So, um, all right, so this is the next franchise. So, yeah, this is a Resident Evil franchise. You guys already know what my favorite Resident Evil game is. I've said it countless times, so... Code Veronica X, I'm sure a lot of you already have played this, you already know what the story is. Um, and you play as my favorite Resident Evil uh, character of all time, which is uh, Claire Redfield. You also play as Chris, um, but Claire for me... I love Claire. I, I don't care. I think she should have more spotlight. She's been in this game, she's been in Resident Evil 2, she's been in Revelations 2, she's been in Degeneration. Um, but I want to see her in more games. She doesn't appear in more in, in as many games as I wish she would, uh, which is a shame. She was in Operation Raccoon City, but I don't count that. That's just a spin-off game to have fun. Um, but yeah, you basically play as Claire. You infiltrate the um, umbrella facilities in the island to try to find your brother Chris. And then some shit goes down. Again, don't want to spoil it if you haven't played it, but I guess that's pretty much the gist of it. I can't really explain why I connected so much with this game, but I did. I love it. I love this game to death. I love the soundtrack. I love everything about this game, so yeah. So next game in a Resident Evil franchise that is my favorite. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Yeah. So in this one, you play as Jill Valentine, and you're trying to escape Raccoon City. Uh, and of course, it's not going to be that easy, because you have this big mutant tyrant-looking thing 
called Nemesis that's gonna be making your life a living hell. But you know what? That's what made the, f the game really, really awesome and fun to me. So yes, Resident Evil 3 is the next Resident Evil game that's my favorite. So there you go. Um, again, a lot of people play those games, so I'm not really gonna get too much into them. So yeah. All right, guys, so the next one is basically two games in one. Um, this is a collection, so yeah. Metro Redux, Metro 2033, and Metro Last Light. The third one was just announced. I'm very excited for that. I, I bet that game's gonna be amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, basically, you play in Moscow, post-apocalyptic. Uh, the, the rest of humanity, the humanity that's left, is leaving underground in the tunnels, in the metro tunnels. Um, and they fear what it's called the Dark Ones. So basically, you're on this quest to um, find out how to get rid of the Dark Ones. So again, I don't want to get uh, too much into it. Uh, I'm just basically giving you a little bit of the, of the story of the game. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that happens in between that. But it's basically that. So if you guys have never played this, recommend it. Okay guys, so I'm going to show these two games together because one of them is actually an expansion and uh, you really don't have to play it, you play it if you want to, it's really not going to do much regarding the original game, um, but I think it's pretty good and it's worth playing, so um, yeah. Alan Wake. I really recommend this, this is more of a thriller than a horror game to be honest, but I believe it is, it deserves a spot on my list, um, it's definitely one of my favorite creepy games. Um, so you play as a writer, uh, Alan Wake, um, while on vacation his wife disappears basically and while you're trying to uncover what happened to her and how she disappeared and where she is, um, you are experiencing um, you are experiencing a plot that you don't remember writing. I guess that's the best way I can put it into words. It's really complicated for me to explain it. But um, it's really good. It's really worth playing. And then you have American Nightmare, which is just a weird expansion for it. So, um, yeah, I'm not really going to talk too much into it because the, the original one that I want to emphasize is the original Alan Wake. But if you want to play the expansion, I wanted to make sure I would show it. So, yeah, Alan Wake is a really, really good game and uh, totally recommend it. You guys should play it if you haven't yet. So next, um, let's see, oh, all right, so this is a game, I was not expecting this game to be good at all, if you guys know anything about me, if you have been following the channel, is that um, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, I don't like those type of games, I'm not really into those type of games, however, when it's games like Life is Strange or the Telltale games, um, most preferably the, the Walking Dead games, um, I do enjoy that, those a lot for some reason, but I I can't I can't get into Heavy Rain for example or Beyond Two Souls. It's weird. So I wasn't expecting too much of this game, and I wasn't expecting to like it. Um, but I did. So until dawn, um, like I said, it it basically it has a lot of um, quick time events. Um, it has a lot of decision making, which is something that I like in a game. Um, and it, this game is just fantastic. I played it with Failed Cycle when she came over uh, a few months ago. We played it together and we had so much fun doing it. Um, so I plan on Let's Playing this. Now, I don't know if I want to do it on my own or if I want to have Failed Cycle here with me to play this like we did Resident Evil 7. Um, but basically you play as various people actually and uh, in this group of friends that goes and spends uh, some time in a cabin in one of their friends cabin um, and it's snowing outside and all that it's winter um, so this group of friends they decide uh, some of the people in that group of friends they decide to prank one of the one of the girls and the prank goes wrong and she decides to run out the house and then her sister goes and chases after her trying to find her um, and then some shit, that's just a prologue, but some shit happens right there. Um, and then sometime later, that same group of friends decides to go back to the cabin. And um, they start experience. there's this crazy killer, that's all I'm gonna say, there's this crazy killer. 
But the killer is not the only thing you're gonna have to worry about this game. There's other stuff that goes on. There's I really don't want to spoil it. Um, because it's so good. Because, you know, until we got to that point, I was so confused. I was really so confused. But, one thing I can tell you. I knew who the killer was from the very first like for from the very start I said I told failed cycle that's the killer I knew it I knew it I just wasn't expecting the the whole stuff that happens after that but wasn't expecting it at all it's good it's really worth playing it it's it became one of my favorite um games horror games of all time it's it's great I hope they release another one okay guys I'm gonna try to hurry up there's only four four games left um so i want to try and finish this as fast as i can um so yeah the next game dead space not dead space 2 not 3 2 was good 3 was fun but not scary uh but yeah dead space so basically you play as isaac you're an engineer and you're going in with your crew to the ishimura uh to try because they had a problem i guess you're gonna you're gonna go there to try to fix some stuff um and Isaac volunteered to go because his ex-girlfriend actually is working there. Um, you get to the Ishimura, everything is pretty empty, very deserted, and uh, everything is very dark. You need to turn the power back on, and when you do, you realize there's some shite going on. So uh, there's necromorphs everywhere that they chase you around, you gotta run. Um, and you quickly realize that most of the crew might be dead. So you need to try to find out if your ex-girlfriend is still alive, what happened to her. Uh, and you need to find a way out of the issue more because now you're stranded. So yeah, it's basically the gist of it. Um, again, I haven't played this in quite a while, but if I remember correctly, that's pretty much, you know, the gist of the game. Um, now... This game surprisingly still holds up very, very well, especially on PC, and the PS3 even. It doesn't look bad at all. Um, I'm surprised that EA, you know, being the company they are, a shitty company, that they didn't try to cash in with a collection of some kind with remastering these games. Um, because we all know, I mean, Dead Space 3 had a perfect ending in my opinion. You know, it didn't need anything else. Just let it be. But no, they had to make a DLC to try to cash in into another sequel. It's completely ridiculous. Um, I think that that space series should end at Dead Space 3, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, Dead Space 1 still remains the my favorite one in the series. And it's, it certainly became one of my favorite games, favorite horror games of all time. So... Okay, guys, so the next game is Alien Isolation. Now, I have to say I wasn't expecting much of this game because of what happened with Alien Colonial Marines. Um, but this is made by a different company. It's not Gearbox anymore because I'm starting to think that the only franchise that Gearbox was able to do right was the Borderlands franchise because everything else they touch, they just fuck it up. Like, real talk. Um, but this was made by Creative Assembly. And uh, it seems that Sega really chose these guys, like, the right guys to do this game. Because this game was fantastic, in my opinion. And I know that this came in a time where these kind of um, hide-and-seek kind of games were already burning out. Um, it, it, they were starting to burn out a lot of people on them. Uh, like we had games like Soma and uh, which wasn't as good as, as people were saying by the way I didn't really enjoy Soma that much um, Amnesia was good but it, it was it was a game that was played to death for example and uh, you know a lot of games like it followed so a lot of people were burned out you know what I mean but this game was just it was just some fresh air, you know what I mean? It wasn't, it, it, like, there's a lot of hiding and there's a lot of running. But at the same time, you do have weapons and you do have, um, you know, things that you can use either to distract enemies or to, um, you, you can actually, for example, the androids, you can actually kill them. Uh, they're not easy to, to kill, but you can kill them if you want to. If you want to waste ammo, you can do it. Um... 
The Xenomorph, however, uh, later in the game, halfway through the game, uh, you'll get a flamethrower and uh, then you'll be able to actually defend yourself kind of against the Xenomorph. You can't kill it. Uh, you can't kill the Xenomorph, but you can, uh, you know, try to uh, make him run away from you. Uh, try to make him back off a little bit, uh, which is interesting. I like that. I like the the fact that you have to scrap, you have to look for scraps to try to to craft things, you know. I, it was just a bummer that you couldn't craft, for example, ammo. You know what I mean? That was kind of a bummer. Uh, but you could make uh, smoke bombs, you could make flashbangs, you could make all those type of things to distract enemies. And that was cool. You could strategize. Um, also, another thing, you had to pay a lot of good attention because the AI of the Xenomorph is just so unpredictable. And that's what the team was going for when they made the game. They said, you know, we want an AI that's going to be completely unpredictable. So let's say if you hide in the same spot for, you know, the majority of time, the alien's going to catch on to that. You know, he's going to know that you're hiding there. And that's a good thing. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I loved that the fact where you're going, uh, you're walking, right? And there's a vent right, right above you. And sometimes you will not notice, but the alien is watching you from that vent and is drooling off of it. And there was so many times that I died because I didn't notice that. And it's so awesome. You hear him constantly chasing you around. And it's genuinely scary. This game is scary. And I play this now on hard mode. Because normal mode just doesn't do it for me. I haven't tried what Nightmare yet. I don't know if I want to try Nightmare. But hard mode is... Oh man, I can tell you it's scary. Um, the DLCs, however, I did enjoy Crew Expendable. And I enjoyed... Um, what is the other one? There's Crew Expendable and there's another one, another Nostromo story related. Um, I can't remember the name. Can't remember the name at all. Oh well. Well, there's two major story uh, DLCs that basically retell what happened in the Nostromo. You can play as Replay, you can play as Dallas and so forth. Um, I really enjoyed those. As for the other DLCs, I really didn't care. Uh, but yeah. Uh, again, you play as Amanda Ripley. I'm babbling too much, and I said that I wanted, I want just, you know, to try to hurry this up. But um, you play as Amanda Ripley, of course, the daughter of Ellen Ripley, and um, you basically, uh, this guy Samuels comes to you and comes talk to you, saying that in this uh, space station called the Sevastopol, they actually found, or it was brought in the space record uh, recorder of the the Nostromo. And uh, uh, basically, that's the key for you to find out what happened to your mother. So, yeah, that's basically it. You go into the Sevastopol because you want to find out more what happened to your mom. And again, and I know I say this all over again because, again, I don't want to spoil things for you guys. And I'm saying the word again too many times. Um, shit goes down. So, yeah. Uh, you, however, you start the game, right? And you don't see, a lot of people were complaining about this, but you don't see the alien for at least the first hour of gameplay <laughs> of this game. So, yeah. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about that, but I think it did a really good job. That did a really good job to, uh, you know, just make the atmosphere even more tense, you know what I mean? Because you never knew when the Xenomorpher was actually gonna jump out and kill you, so... I love this game. I can't express enough for how much I love this game. Next one. This is a very underrated one. This is the second game. Um, second to last game. So, yeah. This is a very underrated one. This is made by Suda51. It's made by Chinji Mikami, which, you know, was in charge of the Re Resident Evil games. And Akira Yamaoka, which was the sound director for the Silent Hill games. So, um, very underrated uh, jam of a game. And I'm pretty sure we're never going to see a remaster of this, or we're never going to see a sequel either. It would be really, really awesome if we saw some kind of sequel or a remaster to this. Because it's so underrated, it hurts. And I'm talking about Shadows of the Damned. Basically, in this game, uh, the story is nothing amazing. You play as Garcia Hotspur, um, and you have this companion called Johnson. 
Uh, he basically turns into the various guns you're going to be using throughout the game. And um, basically your girlfriend was kidnapped by the uh, Demon King and taken to hell. So it's up to you to go there, kill some demons and try to rescue your girlfriend. So yeah. Uh, it's basic. That's basically the story of the game. You're gonna be going through a lot of shooting, um, a lot of exploring. Um, I believe there is a few puzzles in this game. I haven't played this in a while, but I believe yes, there is. Ah, oh, I remember one, a specific one that just killed me. Ah, oh, it, it it happens later in the game, but this game is so amazing and it hurts me so much that it's so underrated so 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 underrated um now just like ghost hunter like i mentioned this is a game that has a lot of horror stuff it's very gory too but at the same time it's funny as hell it's funny it's rude and uh, i love it and i think that a lot of you would love it too if you played it so yeah all right guys last game which i bet a lot of you already know what it is so i'm not even you know I'm just gonna put it out there. Silent Hill 2. And you guys know why Silent Hill 2 is my favorite. Uh, this game... This game is special to me. Uh, this game helped me throughout a lot of difficult situations. Uh, whenever I felt down, I used to play this game and uh, I love it to death. Um, not only that, but it's... Again, it's one of those games that messes with your mind. It's, one of, it's, it's a sad game. It did make me cry quite a few times back in the day. Still today, still today makes me cry sometimes because it resonates so much with me. Um, but what is, what is there to say about Silent Hill 2 that hasn't been said before? It is a masterpiece. Everything from uh, the story to the music, just everything. Everything is amazing. Just everything in this game completes, like, it complete. That's this game completes me. It's like I'm talking about a human being. This game completes me. Okay? It completes me. I love it. And if you haven't played it, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your life. You play this game. <laughs> you play this game. It's good. So you you, you basically play as James Sunderland. Uh, you get a letter from your deceased wife telling you to go meet her at your special place in Silent Hill. You go there and shit hits the fan. So it's basically that. <laughs> I'm giving you, like, I feel like every single description that I'm giving you now, especially in the second part of the pile, it's like, it's becoming, like, shorter and shorter. I'm just like, oh yeah, this happens, and then shit hits the fan. Um, but I said I was not going to talk uh, too much about each game, especially because I don't want to make this game already too long. It's already long. If this game is going to, I bet this game is going to be like... 30 something minutes long already because I'm not gonna cut this into parts. I just can't be asked um, So yeah Silent Hill 2 my number one uh, Favorite horror game of all time. Like I said, this is the only one that has a number. This is number one all the other ones They were in no specific order. So yeah So this was a list of my favorite horror games of all time Um and I want you guys to do something. If you happen to come across this video and watch it to the end, and if you enjoyed it, hopefully my cam didn't fucking fuck up like it usually does. I need to get a new camera. I can't afford it yet, so... Uh, but I need to get a new camera uh, because I want to expand more on my content and uh, my webcam seems to be, you know, messing up here and there. Uh, but hopefully I can I can put this video out. But like I was saying, I want you guys to do something. If you come across this video and you enjoy it, um, let me know what your favorite horror games of all time are. Make a video uh, a video response and give me a link, uh, or put it down in the description. You know whatever you want. I I think it would be fun if you guys would share your favorite horror games of all time. Um, I want to do other lists. I want to do, for example, um, my updated horror collection, uh, game collection. Um, and I want to do a PlayStation 4 game collection as well. I don't have a lot of games, but I have some. Uh, like, my collection has been growing slowly but steadily. And I think it would just be, f uh, you know, some fun videos to make. So, um, wow, my voice is going. This is what happens when I talk for a long time nonstop. See, this is what happens. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
Uh, I enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun, even though my voice is going and my throat is really hurting. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, you know what to do. Drop a like, subscribe if you want. Uh, oh, click that bell next to the subscribe button to be notified every time I put something up. That's very important, guys. Please, please do that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you guys enjoy, you know what to do. And meet me here for the next one. Peace.